These people are absolutely ridiculous. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about MS-13 DNC, also known as MSNBC, speaking about voter ID laws negatively impacting trans people rather than quote-unquote minorities. Now, remember, the general idea going into this election cycle and also previous cycles was that if you pass voter identification laws, it's racist because it negatively impacts black and Hispanic, but mostly black people. Like somehow we don't know where the DMV is. We don't have identification. We don't apply for home mortgages, for rent, for welfare benefits, for gun ownership. We don't do anything that requires identification. So requiring identification to go out there and vote is racist against us. That was a narrative and it still kind of is a narrative, but that narrative is dying. Why? Because they passed quote unquote restrictive voter identification laws in Georgia. And as a result, you have record high turnout, record high turnout. And then you got people like Corinne Jean-Pierre, White House press secretary talking about, oh, you can have restrictive and oppressive laws while at the same time having record turnout. It didn't make any sense. If anything, these laws made it easier and more accessible to vote, which is what they said from the very beginning. That's what Brian Kemp said. These laws will make voting easier, more accessible, and more secure. And that's what happened. Why? Because everybody that is going to vote has ID. If you don't have ID, you might smoke crack for a living. And if you smoke crack for a living, I don't think you're really worried about midterm elections anyway. You're worried about how to get that next hit of crack or how much it weighs, shout out, to Joe, shout out to, not Joe, but Hunter Biden, same thing. Anyway, let's get to the clip I have of MS-13 DNC talking about this particular thing, and then I'll give my reaction immediately afterward. And if you want to see this without my commentary, link will always be in the description box below. Good to see you. And as Gen Z gears up to hit the polls, transgender voters are concerned they might be blocked from casting their ballots. Yeah, that's because a growing number of states are enforcing stricter voter identification laws that disproportionately impact the community. NBC Out reporter Joe Yerkeba joins us now with more on this. Joe, good morning to you. So first of all, how can voter ID laws create obstacles for transgender people? And where do we see some of the strictest voter ID laws? So, OK, let's just pause for a second. Is this person's name Joe? All right. So I can kind of see what side of the issue they're going to be on already, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm no rocket scientist. I'm not a super brilliant person, but two plus two still equals four in any day of the week. Sure. Yeah. So voter ID laws disproportionately impact trans people because trans people are more likely to have IDs without the name uh, that they go by and the gender marker that reflects how they present. And recent research shows that just over 200,000 eligible trans voters in uh, 31 states that both conduct their elections mostly in person and require or request ID at the polls don't have IDs that reflect their gender identities and the names they go by. Um, and, you know, the states that have the strictest voter ID laws are mostly concentrated in the South and Midwest. So you're, you know, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Kansas. So voters there are going to be most. Okay. So, so that's that. If I can find more, I'll let you guys know. I'll put it in the box. Basically they're trying to say, Hey, these laws are impacting trans people because Don't what's happening here ID. is the, the, the name they go by and the name of some of their identification is different. And also their gender could be different. But see, here's the thing about that. How about go and update your ID? Update your ID and, and figure it out that way. And your gender really wouldn't be relevant. All, over, all that's relevant is your name, right? That's, that's, your, your, that's your name and your face. This person, Joe, uh, spelled with uh, no E at the end, just J-O. Gender neutral name, I suppose. I'm not really sure what they identify as, what their pronouns are. But... If I saw a picture of quote unquote Joe at 18 years old with long curly blonde hair or something like that, I probably would still think that's the same person. If I saw a picture, okay, just like me, my ID, I have clean shave, right? But now I got this beard going on. You can still see that it's me. When I use my identification, you still see, okay, it's the same person. I might look a little bit different, but I'm still... At the end of the day, the same person, okay? 
It's clear. So why would that actually be a problem? I don't think it's really an issue. You still would be able to. Now, your gender may not match, but that's not necessarily going to be something that people care about. It's like, all right, check it out. If Caitlyn Jenner goes to the polls with the ID that still says Bruce Jenner on it, you still six foot three, got them big broad shoulders and that big crazy neck. Like you still are working out every day trying to go to the triathlon, right? You still trying to be doing the discus and the long jump and whatnot at age 75 or whatever old you are. You still look like how you look before, because at the end of the day, you did not change that much. So why is it even a problem? If you have identification, that should be enough. Although it may not be what you want on there, it should be enough to satisfy your ability to go out and vote. And if it's not, then you need to go update your picture, update your gender or your name or whatever it is. Go through the steps, go through the steps you need to be able to do that. And again, let's go, let me come back so you can see me clearly. Now, if you're transgender, are you not buying a home? Are you not going to, I don't know, apply for a job that may require you to show identification. If you are not very well off financially, if you want, um, let's say you want to go to college, financial aid, you need identification for that. Um, let's say you are on welfare, you need identification for that. Section eight, identification for that. You want to go to the club, you want to go buy a drink, you need ID for that. You want to go to a restaurant, have a glass of wine. Okay, show me your ID, please, ma'am, sir, lady, sir, whatever it is. Okay, show me that ID. You need identification for just the most mundane things in your everyday life. So why would voting be any exception? It's kind of a ridiculous thing. I think that they're desperate here. When I say they, I mean the left. They're desperate because they know they don't have much else to hang their hats on. They know they got to get people on something. They know they got to do something. So they don't have the policies that people want. You know, they're talking about climate change and things like that. Maybe abortion could be an issue. But at the end of the day, if you go to that gas pump and you can't afford it, and they're talking about climate change and abortion and things like that, it's like, okay, or, or this whole LGBT thing, it's like, okay, that's cool, but check it out. Um, how am I going to put gas in my car? You're not giving me a plan for me to get from point A to point B. I'm trying to get from my home to my work to make money, take care of myself, take care of my wife and my kids. You're not giving me a plan to do that. So I don't really care about these little ridiculous issues. And the whole thing about voter ID it's not even the real problem. It's not even, it's not a problem people care about because it's not an actual problem. As I've said, they passed so-called restrictive, quote unquote, restrictive voter identification laws in Georgia. But as a result, they had record high voter turnout. It doesn't make any sense for it to be, you know, something that is restrictive, but at the same time have record turnout. It doesn't really make any, it doesn't, it doesn't go together. So this whole issue right here is kind of crazy, but I think they're just, they're reaching at this point. They're, they're reaching, uh, go, go gadget reach. They, they're reaching all the way out to the sun because they know the, the whole voter ID thing is, is weak, but they don't have anything else. Like, what should they do? Throw something on the wall and see if it sticks. If it doesn't stick, then oh well. If it does, then great. And I, But I don't think this issue here will stick to that proverbial wall. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about this whole thing of voter identification? Is it oppressive, restrictive? Is it racist? Is it transphobic, homophobic, whatever it is? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys should pretty much know where I'm at. If you have changed your identification, if you've changed who you are, like let's say you were born, going back to Big Bruce, you're born as Bruce uh, Jenner, and now you're Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. Well, what you got to do is update that on your on your stuff. Update your your address, update your 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 phone identification, update your ID, your driver's license, whatever you have, update that. It would be the same thing if you move. If you move from California to New York and you still have all your California stuff, you still get charged California taxes on your car, you still have in your mail go to your old house. Why wouldn't you do a change of address so you have your mail go to your new house get your vehicle stuff changed so you'd be able to register your car in new york and pay their fees rather than the california fees it's it's so simple to do certain things anybody can do it if, if you're able to move across the country and buy a home and have a family and have a job you're able to have identification if you don't have identification like i said you probably smoke crap for a living 
you're outside, you're laying on the ground all day. You have no impact on society other than being a burden, really, generally. Not all the time, but 99% of the time. If you don't have ID, then I, I presume you're not really involved in society because you got to have that to be involved in society. Your vote is not even going to be cast anyway. People that actually do things and are productive are going to have identification. And I wish they would try, I wish they would stop trying to say that people who are productive and are going to go out there and vote and are really part of society just somehow don't have identification because of their, their, their gender orientation, their gender confusion or their race. That really, in my opinion is the true homophobia and racism but whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.